Arguably one of the most important parts of the soccer team is the goalkeeper. In order to have success in the net, one must have automatic reflexes. Lucky for the cowgirls, Jordan Nitez is one of the best. That game is one for the history books. The students rushed the field and true bedlam ensued. Some took photos, others took towels from the Oklahoma State bench. I kept my trusty pom-pom, but all OSU fans kept lasting memories from November 27, 2021. Thanks to the NIL, there are more opportunities for fans and athletes to interact. After a Cowboy win, you can come here to Coney Island and leave with a full stomach and an autograph from your favorite Cowboy athlete. Growing up with a brother with Down syndrome, Alexander is well aware how cruel the world can be. She began volunteering back in high school, organizing a polar plunge event to raise money for Special Olympics, trying to give these kids some fun. When she came to OSU, she knew she wanted to leave a mark bigger than athletic success, but wasn't quite sure how. In her last year of eligibility, Alexandra was worried she would never accomplish her goal, until she joined the Shrum's weekly Bible study. So through that, I learned that Darren had a background in special education. And it finally just clicked that this is like the people that I need to help me, you know, and not selfishly, but like at together we can get this done. Thus, the Chili Cowboy was born. Alexander worked on teaming up with athletics, and the goal was set at $10,000. And if that was reached, then athletics and faculty members, from head coaches to OSU president Shrum herself, would participate in the dunk tank. Shortly after the dunk, there was an auction at a Cowboys basketball game as well. The $10,000 goal was quickly reached and greatly surpassed. The Cowboy family way exceeded that expectation. We raised over a little over $33,000 in its first year. Students want to give money both for a good cause and to see some high status names in the dunk tank, like Gundy or Boynton. No one wants to see a fellow student participate. Unfortunately, no dunk tanks were available today, but I can't let the coaches have all the fun. While Alexander and Shrum claim the creation of the event, it is a full team, university, and community effort to pull it off. The leaders have already met several times this year to make sure the next event is a bigger success than the last. I think just the support in general um, and like Chelsea said, uh, pulling everybody together from marketing to just every aspect of the university and more people want to be involved which will just make the event better and, and hopefully the ultimate goal is to raise a lot of money to donate. Alexander has definitely left her mark on OSU, both on the softball fields and in the hearts of those impacted by the Chili Cowboy. For the Poke Report, I'm Alex Dusky. Bedlam, a rivalry for the ages. Some say it divides the state of Oklahoma. Others say it brings everyone together for one reason, to beat the other team. Historically, Bedlam games have gone in favor of that school down south, OU. The Sooners have defeated the Cowboys a whopping 90 times in the 116 meetings. OSU has been called OU's little brother for years, but that doesn't rattle the Cowboys. you got to prepare the same way no matter who you're playing. I mean, we could play the... I don't know if I can say that might be canceled. Uh, you now you could play, you know, Uaga Junior High. You have to prepare the same way as you would for this game. The most recent Bedlam matchup is one OSU fans will never forget: a top 10 matchup, Brennan Presley's 100-yard kick return, a fumble for a safety, missed field goals, a muff punt. This game had it all, but more importantly, it had a Cowboy victory. It was like an explosion of elation. You know, it just people jumping up and down and the noise was deafening. I mean, yeah, it, it was an explosion of emotion. That game is one for the history books. The students rushed the field and true bedlam ensued. Some took photos, others took towels from the Oklahoma State bench. I kept my trusty pom-pom, but all OSU fans kept lasting memories from November 27th, 2021. And that brings us to tomorrow's matchup. For the third year in a row, Bedlam is America's biggest game, playing at 6.30 with a nationwide ABC broadcast. The stakes are high with this rivalry, higher with a national broadcast, but highest with it being played in Norman. However, the Cowboys aren't feeling the pressure. I don't think it's any different than you know, any other game. Just, uh, yeah, whether we play at 2.30, 6.30, midnight, you know, you got to attack every game the same. It has been an interesting season for both teams. Will the Cowboys get the Bedlam Trophy two years in a row? We will all have to find out tomorrow. Hi everyone and welcome to week two of the Poke Report. I'm Alex Dusky. And I'm Asa Lucas. We have a great show for you this week. You know, Asa, last week it was great to be in Waco covering the Cowboys-Bears game, but it is not as great as being back 
on OSU's campus in front of Boone Pickens Stadium with you. I mean, speaking of things that are great like Boone Pickens Stadium, I have the opportunity to work with the one and only Alex Dusky. Hey, so you flatter me, you flatter me. We have a lot of OSU athletics to talk about, so let's get right into it. We have to start off our show today by recapping last week's big win over the Baylor Bears. Now Weber has a scoop. All right, well, let's move past OSU's loss and take a look at the rest of the Big 12 last week. We are now joined by our Big 12 expert, Jace Andrews, up in the studio. Jace? We're going to take one more quick break, but don't go away. We've said all season that the Big 12 is a crazy conference. How did the teams do last weekend, and what should fans expect this weekend? We will have the recap and two very special guests joining us for our predictions. All that and more when the Pokeport returns. All right, the final Big 12 game, of course, the OSU Cowboys versus the Kansas State Wildcats, a 2.30 p.m. kickoff tomorrow right here behind us at Bill Snyder Family Memorial Stadium. The Wildcats, they are favored by a point and a half. Jacob, what do you think about this game? I'm going to say K-State wins the football game. I don't think Adrian Martinez plays. I think it's Will Howard. And last week, Will Howard against TCU had the best game he's ever played. You know, I feel like he got thrown into the fire his freshman year during the COVID season. He really wasn't ready, but to play major D1 football as an 18-year-old kid, not a lot of people are, right? So I definitely think he's getting better, and he showed that last week. I think he fired a couple of really nice passes. Cade Warner played a heck of a game, and I think it's a team effort. I think K-State wins. I'm going to say 34 to 24. All right, Jace? I'm going to have to disagree with you. I think Oklahoma State does win the game, although I do agree Will Howard doesn't get enough credit. That kid came in here and was freshman, played a lot. I mean, that's really, really talented play right there. And then having to skip behind Skylar Thompson last year, and now you got A.J. Martinez, the transfer. But I do think Oklahoma State comes out on top. Really the only threat that I think it's going to be tough for Oklahoma State to stop is Deuce Vaughn. That guy is something else. <laughs> and we saw what Bijan did to our Cowboys last week. I'm scared Deuce may do the same thing, but I got the Cowboys winning this one 35 to 28. All right, Tony, what are your thoughts? I have our Cowboys coming out on top against the Kansas State Wildcats. I think it's going to be a pretty close game, not as close as this past game, but also not as high scoring. So I would say 34 to 24 is my score prediction. I'm going with our Cowboys coming out on top. Now, Jacob, you had the Wildcats winning by 10. I have our Cowboys winning by 10, 31 to 21. Now, Asa was not able to join us today, but he has TCU, OU, Baylor, and OSU coming out on top tomorrow. So we will see who is right. That'll do it for the Poke Report today. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Alex Dusky. I'm Jacob Hall. And I'm Jace Andrews as the Poke Report signs off for Manhattan, Kansas. And as always, go, go Pokes! Heading up to our neighbors to the north, the Kansas Jayhawks were looking to keep their undefeated season alive against Duke. Jalen Daniels and the Jayhawks have been one of the most electric offenses in college football, and they keep that going with a 73-yard pass to Daniel Hinshaw Jr. It was a back-and-forth game, but Daniels got a three-yard run, his fourth touchdown of the game, to put Kansas up 35-20 in the fourth. Duke put one more score on the board, but it's not enough, and Kansas won 35-27. The team is now 4-0. I repeat, the Kansas Jayhawks are 4-0 in football. Never thought I'd say that.